Here is wild lettuce. This is in the genus Lactuca. Lactuca is an old word for milk. And if you look at where the, I broke the stem open here, you can see this white milky substance coming out. Latexy, they sometimes describe it as. So that's what the Lactuca is referring to. This plant is edible and medicinal, and it's used medicinally as a sedative. It has almost opiate-like qualities to it, although it's not addictive and it's not technically an opiate. It's definitely popular with some people. I have made it into a tincture and used it before as part of a Nervine blend, and I've also smoked it and then fell asleep for two hours. Here is yellow dock, Rumex crispus. This is a very common weed in gardens. This is also edible and medicinal. It also is high in oxalic acid, and so you do want to be careful about eating too many of the leaves. You need to cook them. The flowering heads like this can also be made into a tea. The root is definitely a very medicinal part too. It's a valuable plant, and I leave it for that reason. In Oregon, where we used to farm, it was very common. It would like take over a whole area. Down here in this desert area, not so much. It doesn't really tend to spread, so it's easy to just keep it around. This is some kind of mallow. I don't know which one. There's lots of different kinds. Malva is, in all likelihood, the genus of this plant. And this makes a ground cover. It's a perennial. Really doesn't get in the way. It makes charming little white flowers. It's related to marshmallow, the marshmallow plant, Althea thickenalis. And so medicinally, it's not as good as the official one, but it is still valuable. This is an introduced species from Asia, originally became domesticated or domesticated uh, themselves in Egypt, is the story. This is a very handsome example of this particular species, who I guess I wouldn't really describe as a weed, although it is feral. Oh, ho, ho, ho. This one's name is Pouncer. Look at you. Yes. So, pouncer happens to be right next to catnip. Catnip, catnip. There's lots of catnip in this garden. Catnip is a weed here. Uh, there were a few plants here a couple years ago when my friend bought this property, and we let them go. They went to seed, and now catnip comes up everywhere. Ah, not looking so good because it's got powdery mildew, but this is dandelion, Taraxacoma thickenalis. Also another one that was really common in the Pacific Northwest, where I used to live. Here, not so much. And it never got poverty mildew up there either. Here it does, I don't know why. But I always leave dandelions to go. And if I am going to take them out, I harvest them and use all the parts. I don't just, quote, weed them out. That's ridiculous. The hatred of the dandelion only came about because um, companies that make their money off of green lawns, off of grass seed and off of poisons to keep the weeds out of the lawns wanted you to hate this plant. So if you hate dandelions, you're just being a sucker to marketing. This is a big patch of lamb's quarters here. This is closely related to quinoa, same genus, chenopodium. This all came up here in this corner just because I came in and turned over this bed this spring. Definitely an edible plant. It's also known as summer spinach because it's nice and healthy and big and producing lots of leaves as you can see right now when all the spinach has long ago bolted from having been too hot. This one has a similar taste. You can use it in a similar way uh, that you would use spinach. You could make a calzone out of it. I've actually done that before. It's really good to eat and there it is. It's free food. Going underneath it here is Plantago lanceolata, also known as plantain. I prefer to call it Plantago. Plantago is the Latin word for footprint because this plant grows where people walk. It grows on trails, it grows on paths, because it does really well in compact soil. An interesting coincidence is that when this plant was brought to North America by European colonists, it got the name White Man's Footprint by some of the Native Americans who noticed the same habit. So there you have the Romans calling it something 2,000 some years ago, and Native Americans calling it basically the same thing you know, hundreds and hundreds of years later. Pretty fascinating. There's Pouncer again. 
So when we came here in 2018, someone had started a garden that year and they had planted one row of Italian parsley right here, 2018. Uh, that's a biannual plant. It was so it went to seed in 2019 and scattered its seed everywhere. And now in this garden, Italian parsley is a weed. There's now three healthy rows of it in this bed. Plus it's growing at the edge of all these other beds. You just really can't complain about that. It's one of my favorite vegetables anyway. And look, it's everywhere now. So that's where something that was planned becomes a weed, becomes a plant out of place. Here's another plantago, much different leaf shape than the other one you'll notice. That was called Lanceolata. I'm trying to remember what the species name of this one is. So one of the things that this is medicinal for as well as the yellow dock is if you get stung by something like a bee or whatever take a little bit of this a little bit of the yellow dock leaf put it in your mouth chew it up and then take and put it on the sting and it really does help seriously it actually does so if you have some of this come up in your garden you also have bees in your garden which hopefully you do you want to leave these plants around just in case that happens here's a red clover that just volunteered it's a nitrogen fixing plant it's also medicinal can't at the moment remember what its medicinal use is, but here it is. So left that go. Hopefully that seeds and spreads around more. Mullen, genus for Bascom. The species of this is probably Thapsus. There was uh, two or three volunteers that got really big and flowered last couple of years. And so I was really happy to see them coming up here because it's a really nice lung medicine. It came up really thick in this bed and I wanted to keep some. So I put some at the end of each row to let it grow where it wouldn't be in the way. And again, this is another medicinal wild volunteer plant, very common in the Pacific Northwest, but not very common down here. I think in large part because of the lack of rain. Here's a garden where we just threw down a bunch of mulch from straw bales to keep the weeds down until we were ready to plant in it. I think the idea is we're gonna plant some watermelons here, which would happen in a couple of weeks as soon as the starts are ready. And you'll notice a bunch of grass has come up since then. Well, that is whatever the straw bales were made of. This looks like wheat to me. So what's cool about this is that this has never been watered except for rain. And I think it's really only rained a couple, three times since we threw this mulch out here. So this is pretty amazing. This is, it's not gone very tall, but it's making heads. This is making wheat. If you wanted wheat to eat, here there is some getting produced. So yeah, it's kind of hard to grow a lot of things in this area. So the fact that this is growing all by itself without any moisture and is producing healthy heads, that's pretty encouraging. So this, I was thinking, well, I was hoping that uh, we could leave it until it was ready and harvest it because the seed is, that's got some good seed. I remember when I first started gardening, when I found something that came up and I didn't know what it was, I'd be like, what is this? And then I'd just pull it up. Then there was this point where I transitioned instantly. It was just one day that it happened from, what is this, yank, to what is this? Let me leave it and let me see. So in that time, I really started to learn a lot more about the different places that I've tried to garden and tried to farm because the plants that come up on their own are well suited to the area that you're in, in one way or another. And so that's telling you something. It might be telling you something about your climate, it might be telling you something about the soil that you have, it might be telling you something about the water. So there's signals that you can be getting from these plants that tell you something or tell you things that might be useful for you trying to garden or trying to farm. That's one thing. Secondly, is that a lot of these plants might be edible or medicinal on their own. Third, for people who are concerned about trying to restore native landscapes, a lot of plants that come up that are weeds are actually native plants that were in that area first. Of course, now we're living in a time where all sorts of plants have been introduced and that's not gonna reverse itself anytime soon. So now we have these novel ecosystems that are beginning to emerge at this point that are co combinations of native plants and the introduced plants. And so we'll see where it goes from there. So I'm hoping that next time you're out in your garden or on your farm or whatever, and you see some plants coming up that don't belong there, some weeds that you think twice before you yank. Take a look at it, decide, is it really in your best interest and in the best interest of the land that you're on and in the best interest of your crops to get rid of that plant? Or could that be 
a companion that is useful in some way.